Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom 5. Today's video is going to be about the KP equilibrium constant, which is in terms of pressure. It's very similar to KC, but here we talk about the partial pressures instead of the concentrations. So it's a partial pressure constant. But before we talk about this KP, we should know what is partial pressure? For that, we need to understand that when gases are in a container, we are more interested in their pressures rather than concentrations. Imagine a purple colored gas which can reach an equilibrium. But in the beginning, the only purple colored reactant is here and their product, which, which I'm saying is the red colored product, is not there. Initially, the total pressure was exerted entirely by the purple reactant gas. But as equilibrium was established, and now you can see the red colored product is also here. So at equilibrium, the purple and the red gases both exert their own pressures within the container. The total pressure was contributed by the purple colored gas and also the red colored gas. So partial pressure means the fraction of total pressure, the fraction of the total pressure exerted by each gas. For example, in my container, it should be the partial pressure of purple and the partial pressure of the red gas. And the total pressure should be equal to the partial pressure of these two because there are only two gases in the container. So the total pressure was contributed by these two. The purple partial pressure should be equal to the moles of purple divided by total moles times total pressure. We call it the mole fraction times total pressure. Similarly for red, the moles of the red gas divided by total moles times total pressure. So we find the mole fraction and then we times it by the total pressure. Like imagine in the Haber process, let's say you had three moles of nitrogen and six moles of hydrogen. That is initially, right? So initially, the number of moles of nitrogen equals to 3 mole. The number of moles of hydrogen equals 6 mole. And you have no ammonia in the beginning. In a closed system, when the equilibrium is established, you can see some ammonia is there. How much, how much nitrogen was used up? So you can notice the two mole nitrogen are left, so one was used up, and three mole hydrogen are left, so definitely three was used up. One mole was used up for nitrogen out of three, so two is remaining. Three mole hydrogen were used up out of six, so three is remaining. And that is also equal to the mole ratio. One mole nitrogen reacts with three hydrogens to make double ammonia. So obviously the number of mole of ammonia in the container should be 2 mole and you can also see in the diagram that it is actually true. Now imagine if you check the pressure and it was 260.1 pascal total pressure. This 260.1 total pascal is achieved by the 2 mole nitrogen, 3 mole hydrogen and 2 mole ammonia. What is their partial pressure? So let's find out. The partial pressure is equal to the mole of nitro divided by total mole times total pressure and same for hydro, same for ammonia. So we first find the mole ratio for nitrogen which is 2 mole nitrogen divided by 7 total moles times total pressure which is 260.1. The partial pressure of hydro is going to be 3 mole hydro divided by total moles times total pressure. Partial pressure of ammonia is going to be 2 mole ammonia divided by 7 total moles times total actual pressure. 
Based on my calculation, nitro has 74.314 pascals, hydro is 111.471 pascal, and ammonia is also 74.314 pascals. By the way, the total partial the total partial pressures can be added to give you the actual pressure. So 74.314 111.471 and the again 74.314 should give you 260.1 actual pascal pressure. The Kp is found by the partial pressure of product in the numerator and the partial pressure of reactant as a denominator raised to the power of their mole ratios like Kc. In my equation, ammonia was a product so partial pressure of ammonia times square divided by the partial pressure of hydro times cube and the partial pressure of nitro. If you try to solve it, ammonia's partial pressure was 74.314 times square. Hydro's partial pressure was 111.471 times cube. And nitro's partial pressure was again 74.314. When we solve it, I get to know that the actual Kp here is 5.365 exponent minus 5. Hey, what are the units? So we can find the units. We have done Kc already. The units are variable here, right? So the product ka partial pressure is Pascal square. The reactant is a Pascal cube and Pascal raised to the power 1. We cancel it and we get to know that it is 1 over Pascal square, so Pascal inverse 2. Let's, let's conclude Kp with three important points. So we're going to be writing the important features of Kp. The first one is that the units are variable for Kp, much like Kc. It depends on the Kp and Kc expression. The second is that value depends, value of Kp obviously, value of Kp depends only on Kc and temperature. So if you change the temperature, for example, the Kc will change. And since the Kc changes, the Kp will also change. No other factor changes Kp. So for example, we should write that it's not dependent upon, for example, for example, for example, total pressure it does not depend upon total pressure. It does not depend on the presence or absence of a catalyst. It does not depend upon the initial amount of the substances. So that is something we should keep in mind. The final important thing about Kp is its relationship with Kc. When we try to relate Kc and Kp, there are three possibilities. Number one, Kc's value could be bigger than Kp. Second is going to be, the value for Kp could be bigger than Kc. Or Kc and Kp could be equal. Kc is bigger than Kp if the product has lesser gaseous moles than the reactants. For example, in contact process, when we write the equation like this, we notice that the reactant side has three gaseous mole, three gaseous mole. And the product, product side has two gaseous moles, so product has lesser gaseous mole. So Kp is going to be smaller than Kc. Kp is going to be bigger than Kc if product has more gaseous moles. For example, in the decomposition of ammonia, which is the reverse Haber process, double ammonia gives you hydro I should write three hydro and one nitro, but you know what the drill is. So here the product has more gaseous moles. And here Kp is going to be bigger. Kc and Kp are same. 
if the mole on both sides are same. Like in the decomposition of gaseous hydrogen iodide, you get a mole of hydro and a, ga and, and a mole of iodo. So here, Kc and Kp are similar because two gaseous mole on left side, two gaseous mole on right side. With this, let's jump on a past paper question. It says hydrogen chloride undergoes a reversible reaction with oxygen. When 1.60 mole of hydrogen chloride are mixed in a sealed container with 0 0.500 mole of oxygen at 400 degrees Celsius, 0 0.600 mole of chlorine and 0 0.600 mole of steam are formed. So let's highlight the important information here. HCl is 1.6, oxygen is 0.5, and at equilibrium you get 0.6 chlorine, 0.6 steam. Let's write the reactants and the products before we lose a track of their amounts. In the beginning as initial, 1.6 HCl, 0.5 oxygen, and zero of the products. Some of it has been used up and some of it was at equilibrium. How much oxygen was used up and how much HCl was used up depends on what amount of product you get. So how much chlorine are you getting? You're getting 0.6 chlorine and 0.16. You can clearly notice that the ratio between HCl and chlorine is 4 is to 2 or you can call it 2 is to 1. In order to make 0.6 chlorine, how much HCl was used up? So you would say 1.20 HCl was used up and how much was left? Obviously 0.4 or you can say 0 0.400 HCl was remaining after some of it got used up. Moving on about oxygen and chlorine. Two moles of chlorine are made when one mole of oxygen is used up. How much oxygen was used up to make 0.6 chlorine? We take the ratio and we get to know that oxygen was used up at 0.30 mole. So 0 0.30 was used up and how much was left? 0 0.2 or 0 0.200. So the amount of HCl in the container is going to be 0 0.400 and oxygen is 0 0.200. Calculate the mole fraction of chlorine and hence the partial pressure. Mole fraction of chlorine is going to be equal to number of moles of chlorine divided by total moles. How much chlorine is here? So we know it is 0.6 so 0.6 chlorine is here the total moles are going to be 0 0.6 0 0.6 0 0.2 0 0.4 that's 1.8 so the mole fraction of chlorine is going to be 0 0.6 divided by 1.80 if I'm not wrong that's going to be somewhere around 0.3 ish so 0 0.6 divided by 1.80 and that's 0.33 so 0.33 is the mole fraction or you can call it 0.334. Moving on, what's the partial pressure? So how do we find partial pressures? Partial pressure is going to be equal to mole fraction of chlorine times total pressure. The mole fraction was 0.6 over 1.8 and what's the total pressure? So total pressure was 1.5 exponent 5. So that's 1.5 exponent 5 pascals. That is pretty easy because that is 1 is to 3 and then we divide it we get 5.00 exponent 5 pascals and mole ratio we just got to know that's 0.33. I should write 0.33 instead because we round it off to a value of 3. Moving on. In a separate experiment, an equilibrium reaction mixture was found to contain the four gases at the partial pressures shown in the table. The Kp expression is given. Use the information and the expression given for Kp to calculate a value for Kp. State the units for Kp. That is pretty easy peasy question. Kp is going to be equal to the chlorine's amount, chlorine's partial pressure, that 3.6 exponent 4 raised to the power square. Steam is again 3.6 exponent 4 raised to the power square. 
HCl is going to be 4.8 exponent 4 raised to the power of 4 and oxygen is going to be 3.0 exponent 4 raised to the power of 1. When I'm going to solve it on a calculator, I'm going to get I'm going yeah I, I'm using a calculator while I talk about this don't worry about it that's 1.05 so yeah the value is 1.05 exponent minus 5 they want the units also the units we can see that chlorine is pars pascal square steam is pascal square HCl is pascal raised to the power 4 and oxygen is just pascals so these two cancel pascal 4 and their units are going to be pascal inverse. I hope this idea is clear to you. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.